in week three you're going to establish a color palette. I'm just going to go over that in this video um, tutorial. Um, first of all, I'm going to grab a rectangle tool. You can choose the ellipse tool, any any um, object you want to draw. You can go ahead and draw that object. I'm just going to draw a little square to start with. I'm going to change the stroke color to none and the fill color to whatever color I want. If and you may want to pick this this kind of going to be your anchor color um, pick a color that relates to your subject matter so if it's something dealing with emotions you might want to choose a red or warm color if it's something dealing with um, the ocean or or um, nature ocean would be blue nature might be green so pick a color that fits your project the best um, and you're going to go ahead and and duplicate that color or duplicate that square actually um, over to the other side. So to do that, I'm just holding down the Option key and dragging the square. So hold down the Option key and the Shift key. Actually, the keep, Shift key keeps it lined up. The Option key allows you to duplicate it, and you can duplicate it and just duplicate those two squares to make four squares total. Um, that just saves you time. You can use the cut and paste feature as well. You then pick. Um, um, three other colors and they can be any color you want again I would recommend choosing colors that fit your project if you want to, um, some advice on choosing colors this is what I recommend go to window color guide and this gives you some choices to choose from if you have that start color let's say green first of all I'm gonna click on my object that has the green in it and then it gives me this little green square click on the green square and you'll see that all of the settings change to match that green now I can choose complementary colors that complement that color green um, colors that are in the left complement group right complement group analogous group there's two analogous groups actually monochromatic group and so on so these are preset settings in illustrator which is a very nice feature if you don't want to have to guess in picking out colors that go along with the color that you start with so depends on what you're doing again you might want to choose um, a different color scheme to fit this project I'm going to choose tetrad 2 um, to go with my green um, so I'm going to select, instead of this red, I'm going to choose a different color green. Instead of this orange, I'm going to pick that red pink color. And then last, I'm going to pick kind of a yellow mustard brown color. So that can give me my colors to start with. Um, actually, I'm going to pick the blue purple in there as well. So that gives me some colors to start with. They are already grouped in a group, but I, I'm going to build off of those even further for this project. Um, to do the next step, I'm going to select my bl blend tool. Shortcut key to get to the blend tool is W. So just hit W on the keyboard, you'll get your blend tool. Double click the blend tool, and we're going to change the settings first. The default is smooth color. I'm going to choose specified steps, and I'm going to type in there three specified steps. You don't have to change the orientation, just hit OK. So specified steps three, and now with the blend tool still selected, I'm going to click on the first rectangle or first square that I drew that green go to the second green click on the second green that blends those two greens together I'm gonna click on that second green go down diagonally to the red click on that that blends the green to the red then I'm gonna click on the red click on the purple and last I'm gonna click on the purple and go back where I started to that top green so that gives me some colors to work with this was step eight step nine is what I'm starting now. This is where a few students have gotten confused in the past. I'm going to choose Object Expand. Um, that releases my blend, so it's going to allow me to move those boxes around. I'm just going to check Object and Fill just like it's default and hit OK. So now it's released from the blend. I just need to release it from the group or choose Object Ungroup. That will allow me to select each square individually. So at this point you should be able to move those squares around if you want. So now I have all my colors set, I just need to add them to my swatches. So to add them to your swatches, here's what I'd recommend. Go to your swatches panel, that's Windows Swatches, to pull up your swatches panel, and click on the flout menu and choose New Swatch Group. This just helps you organize. You don't have to do this, um, but it does help you organize your swatches. And I'm going to name these um, whatever I want to name them, just name them color. Um, th that just keeps everything together. Now this is step 10, this is where a few students have occasionally gotten confused. You're going to go to the eyedropper tool, there's several ways to do this, I'm going to do it a couple different ways to show you the variety. Um, 
eyedropper tool, click on that first square, or I'm going to click on the bottom square first, and then when you see the color down here at the bottom is purple. If I click on that top square, it changes to that green. So that is that green fill. I can drag that fill color from my tools panel to that little folder icon. Just drag it straight from that fill color to the icon, and you have your uh, first color set. So I'm going to click on the second color and drag the fill to the folder. Click on the third, drag the fill to the folder, and so on. So I'll just go to through those to build my color palette. Um, you can also click on the next square. You can go to window color and you have the same thing in your color panel. Um, so click on again with eyedropper, click on your square, it changes the color fill and you can drag that from the color panel straight down. I think that's a little easier just because you can move the color panel around and it's a little closer, um, but it's really up to personal preference. So click on those, drag them to your color um, setting. The other way to do that is to choose your selection tool and click on whatever object you want to click on and it will change your color as well. So you see in my fill colors changes, you can drag it from down here or I can drag it from the color panel down. So you just do that for every color that you have and before you know it you'll have all the colors set and you'll have your own um, color settings um, built right here in the swatches panel um, and so everything's ready to go so you have all those colors when you move on to another um, project you'll have all those swatches ready to go you can go ahead if you want to um, Save this swatch library if you wish. Just go to the flyout menu, choose the very bottom, and name this whatever you want, um, and save it wherever you want. But remember where you save it, um, because it will it will save um, as a little file like this. So you'll see that it saved as an SCC file. So um, just remember where you save it. That way you can load it in the future.